Yeah, welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody is doing well. And today we're on with our HT4006 AC-DC transducer clamp from HT Instruments. Uh, this is the little current clamp that I purchased alongside the HT65 here from Conrad, in, Conrad Electronic, I should say, in Germany. Whilst the HT65 here is rebadged in the UK by Test Instrument Solutions, I couldn't find this current clamp anywhere for sale in the UK. Um, however, it does look like this is actually a rebadged unit from HT Instruments themselves anyway, unlike the HT65 that is their own design. And if we look at the boxes, this is the box for the HT65 against the box for the current clamp. Hopefully you can see at the bottom there if we get the glare out of the way. We've got designed and imported by HT Tanya on the DMM box here. And on the HT4006 box, we've got just imported by HT Italia. So it looks like they are just rebadging this instrument. And a little bit of Googling around suggests that this instrument may actually come from SEM, SEM Instruments in China, uh, which is the CP-03B instrument. And I believe for a time as well, it looks like this was also rebadged by Xtech as the CA250 but that's now discontinued. So in the box itself, it just comes in this little cardboard box here. Um, you get the instrument, obviously, and you, and you get an uh, instruction manual, um, multiple languages, um, pretty good explanations of its use, um, a few little diagrams. These things are fairly simple anyway, so not too much to them. Uh, how to set the instruments up, and it actually tells you in here that is actually specifically designed to operate with their HT65 and Neptune instruments and also their uh, HT63, 64, Mercury and Jupiter multimeters. It will also work with those as well. Um, so that's the manual. Uh, you also get a little registration guarantee card and a little bit of sales leaflet as well. Now we actually don't get a case with the HT4006, but you do get one with both of these instruments, both the Neptune and the HT65 here that is in its case, a uh, little pouch for the leads here. And because this is so small and also the meter is so, so small, you can actually fit the little current clamp transducer inside by the side of the meter. Then you will still be able to do the case up and carry it around like that. So, yeah, not brilliant that it's not got a case, but there is a workaround as the clamp is designed to operate with these meters. It will fit into the case alongside them quite happily. And then that leaves us with, oh, sorry, you also get two AAA battery cells, uh, which is what powers the instrument. Uh, so that then leaves us with the instrument itself. Slightly, um, soft rubberized feel to this grey outer casing uh, and then uh, just hard smooth plastic on the actual current clamp aspect of it itself. Uh, there's the battery compartment in there, single screw to hold that in place which is captivated and on the front of the instrument itself uh, you've got the output designated down at the bottom here, 10 millivolts per amp for the 40 amp range and one millivolt per amp for the 400 amp range. Um, you then have uh, just a zero in function here for the DC current measurement ranges. And then you've got the actual range selector switch here, uh, switch is off down at the bottom, 40 amp AC, 400 amp AC, 40 amp DC, and 400 amp DC as well. Uh, now you can see that I've switched on, you also get a little light to let you know that it's powered up. And at the top here, there is also a little light for non-contact voltage detection, um, which if we can find a mains lead, which I probably haven't got plugged in at this moment in time. No, I'll probably have to demonstrate that a bit later. Uh, and also at the top here, we've got the cat rating, which is cat 3, 600 volt, cat 4, 300 volt. But obviously there is no direct contact with conductors with this instrument, um, unless you're putting this around uninsulated conductors, using it on uninsulated conductors, 
um, which is a whole different game in itself. So I've just grabbed our mains lead here to show the function of the non-contact voltage and then you can see as I hold it up to lead, oh there you go, and you see it just lights up. Um, not much sensitivity to it at all really. Um, the sensor is right here in the top. If you put it around, you, as you sort of go around a cable it will light up for you but then when the cable is actually inside um, it's a bit hit and miss as to whether it would light up or not. Uh, so yeah, um, not the most sensitive um, but yeah, it's an interesting feature to stick on a current clamp obviously if you're going around live conductors or neutral conductors you might be able to differentiate between them uh, with the use of that uh, but fairly limited in its functionality I guess. Um, so that's the instrument itself, we'll just pop the cover off um, and have a look inside uh, so we'll see what we can find. So that's the little cover, a little sponge there for the batteries to keep them a little bit tighter and the screw is captivated as well uh, alongside a little brass insert in there for the cover screw as well. Let's pop the batteries out. And then uh, a bigger screwdriver by the looks of it and see if we can get inside. Just two screws to take this cover off. And we are in. Okay. Uh, all right, okay, interesting. Um, Let's uh, try not to lose those screws. Um, it looks like these are soldered direct onto the board, so I can't remove the cover completely. But we do have a little bit of shielding on the back of this. As we see here, contact spring in the corner there. Um, fairly good strain relief on the incoming cable. It looks like there's a, some sort of an attempt with some glue there to secure the actual cores themselves. Uh, and other than that, we don't see an awful lot. And it looks like calibration is actually on these little potentiometers in, inside there. So it looks like it could be open case calibration. Um, a little PTC there onto the input. And that's all the protection there is. But as I said, this is just going on to a, a multimeter. There shouldn't really be any uh, exposed to any spikes, really. Um, Head up in there. And I can't try and make out the uh, designations on there. I can't see anything that does suggest that it's made by Sam, yeah, but obviously it could be on the other side of the board. Okay, let's just drop that screw out and see if we can see anything on the other side of the board. Probably going to regret doing this. underneath there as well isn't there? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. It's going to uh, end in tears for me I think because the non-contact voltage is, uh, it looks like that's soldered in as well. So uh, we'll test it first and then we might tear it down a little bit more at the end, see if we can get some more information. Okay. Him back up, and then we'll set up our current clamp table and take some measurements with it. Okay, so we've set up our clamp table. Uh, we're using the single turn one at this moment in time, as this is quite a small clamp around the large table. I can't uh, move the clamp around that much to see how much variance I get. We're injecting 10 amps AC at 50 hertz. Put the light on. We should be reading between 9.59 and 10.41 amps on the HT65 here. And you can read, see we're reading 9.8988, and we're in the center of the wire. So I'll take the clamp all the way down, and it goes down to 9.7, creeps back up again, 9.79, back up, and the way we're 9.9, Quick minus six, let's go over the left. 
1.73 and all the way to the other side 9.88 yeah it does vary about a bit on that last digit I don't know whether that's the clamp or whether it's the actual instrument to be honest and we'll put it back in the middle and we'll just convert this to DC and we need to change the meter as well There's 40 amps DC, so about zero, about as good as zero as I'm going to get on that. We'll inject 10 amps again. We are 9.79, so we're still above our 9.59. Um, tolerance on this setup is the same for AC or DC, it only changes for the 40 to 400 amp range all the way down 9.72 ish all the way up 9.5 a bit steadier I guess 9.74 all the way across 9.89 9.90 okay so we can work out some variance on that but it looks pretty respectable from what we can see at the moment We'll strip this down and we'll put on the larger clamp table and we'll do some measurements on the 400 amp range. Okay, so we've moved everything over to the 10 turn coil now and we're still on the 40 amp DC range. Uh, so we'll inject 1 amp now, which should take me back to my 10 amps. We are 9.74, so a little bit lower than beforehand, but pretty still within spec. So we'll just quickly take him up to 2 amps. Should be at 20. Again, we'll take up 3 amps. Should be 30 amps now, and we should be 29.29 to 30.71. We're just slightly out, but then my uh, zero wasn't brilliant, was it? Um, up to four amps, which is max on this one. We are 39 amps, and we should be between 39.14 and 40.86. So we are reading a little bit low. And obviously, take him up with our zero. So now 39.5. Let's switch him off. Let's see where our zero is. Um, yeah, we're 0.54, so we're not zero. So it does seem a little bit out on the top ranges at this moment in time. Um, we might be able to stick on a millivolt meter and just see if it's this instrument or if it's the uh, transducer clamp. So let's just uh, we got AC, don't we? Let's go AC and do the same. To change to AC on the meter. And then we'll change our test set, and away we go again. So 9.88, we're in spec there. Let's go 2. And we are 19.5051, so we're in spec there. Let's go 3 amps. 29.57, uh, so we're in spec with that one as well. And our final. 4 amp, uh, 39.22 should be 39.4 minimum, creeps up a little bit. So yeah, he's all in spec on the AC side, just DC was a little bit rough. So we'll reconfigure and go for the 400 up range. Yeah, so this is what you do have to be careful with this. We're on um, 2 amps now, so we should be injecting 100 amps. But I've not changed the range, but obviously we get perfectly good reading of 10 amps, um, or seemingly good reading, um, because I'm on the long range. And we need to go to the 400 amp. Hopefully that should now give me circa 100 amps AC, which we have 100.7. Smack on as good as. Uh, should be between 95.9 and 104.1, so that's all good. Um, let's go to uh, that should now be 200 amps. 
dropped a little bit, but we're well within spec, 194.4. Uh, let's go to 6 amps, should take it to 300 amps, which is 296.4, and we should be 292.9, so that's within spec as well. And finally, our 400 amp, uh, which is 396.9, 397, and we should be between 391.4 and 408.6, so all within specification for the 400 amp AC. So we'll just uh, take him back down to 100 amps. We'll change him to DC. Okay, we switched over to DC. We inject him 100 amp. Again, we've set our meter up to reading DC, 400 amp range. And we are reading 100.5. Let's go uh, 200 amps, 198.8. That's all good. Uh, 300 amp, brain failure then, 297.4 for 300 amps, well within spec, and finally our 400 amp, 396, pretty much dead on, and we should say it should have been 391.4 minimum on that, so it's all looking good, so it's just that uh, 40 amp reading on DC, isn't it, let's just have a quick change around again, and see if we can see what was wrong what's causing that out of tolerance reading. That's 40 amp DC there. Zero again. So let me zeroed and we will inject. Okay, so we're back on our 40 amp measurement. We're injecting 40 amps and we get 38.76, which is below the 39.14 limit. So let's just bring our uh, millivolt meter in and see what we are getting. Now obviously, let's just make sure, yeah. uh, because this is a transducer and only reads millivolts, I can flick this over without any great problem. Uh, put our light on. I'm reading 396.13 millivolts. Oh, uh, that should be between 389.9 and 410 millivolts from the actual clamp output. So the clamp looks to be in spec. It's the combination of the clamp and the instrument uh, that puts it out of spec. So when we look at the actual instrument on its own, the, clamp, the current transducer itself, we get a tolerance of 2.5% plus 0.1. And when we combine the HD65 with current clamp, we should be getting a tolerance of 1.5% plus 26 digits, which has actually come from the HD65 manual. Um, so yeah, quite how that works out um, against using them in combo. I'm not sure, but I can't seem to meet it with this instrument, but obviously I can get it with uh, going on to millivolts on there. Let's just switch off and just see if this goes down to zero millivolts, see how close we are. Yeah, so two millivolts, so yeah, I'll, I'll uh, be happy with that. Um, so yeah, interesting. Uh, seems to be uh, pretty much okay, apart from the issue on a 40 amp DC range being slightly out at the higher amps. Not much more I can do to investigate that at the moment, I'll have to go away and have a think about that. Um, so yeah, that'll be it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you found it useful. And I'll see you again in the next one.